everyone and welcome back to the video. Our visit today takes us around a hollow shell of an old Norman church surrounded by a Neolithic earthwork in the beautiful countryside of Dorset. Join us as we find out why this church was once a symbol of transition from pagan to Christian worship and wonder the site exploring just how atmospheric and haunted the Knowlton church and earthworks is said to be. The main earthwork at Knowlton is a type known as a henge. There are nearly 100 henges in Britain and Ireland, dating from around 3000 to 2000 BC. Although they are generally believed to have been ceremonial sites, it is likely that they fulfilled many functions and may have changed their role throughout the time. There is a rough estimate of over 4,000 years that separate the main Neolithic earthwork at Knowlton and the 12th century Norman church that is right in the middle in its centre. The earthworks here are just one of the landscapes in the Bronze Age in southern England. There are an additional three earthworks in the area, which can be seen on many websites from an aerial picture view taken in 1995. The church was built in the 12th century as a Norman church, as the chancel and the nave both date to this period, it underwent rebuilding and additions in the 15th and 18th centuries, when the North Isle was then added. Knowlton Church is all that remains of a once thriving community that fell victim to the Black Plague in the 14th century. As a consequence, the village fell into ruin and only this small church survived. The walls are mainly of flint with ashlar dressings, and it's been said that the church was built as an attempt to convert the local pagan population to Christianity. The remains of the church really are eye-catching with how odd the ruin is being smack bang in the middle of the landscape. It gives off an eerie feeling, but its reason for the position of the church nods to an attempt to Christianize a pagan ceremonial site. Although the tower is probably the most complete part of this church, walking to the opposite end of the building was probably the most interesting. It is on this side of the church, which I believe is the eastern side, that there was probably a side chapel, most likely a lady chapel. Here you're able to look out for some worn away stonework protruding from the wall to the sides of what used to be a window. Most of the ruins are now just down to its foundations, but you can definitely still picture the characteristic of the Norman period. The site still hasn't been excavated extensively, but I have read that there were megaliths surrounding the Henge that may have been broken and used as materials for the construction of the church. The site is very much known as the most haunted in Dorset. There are many ghosts that are said to haunt the church. A shadowy caped figure has been seen walking the earthworks sometimes accompanied by a giant hound. Another sighting is a figure spotted in the tower, and there are numerous accounts of a woman kneeling before the ruin, and it's possibly that of a nun. There is an ongoing mystery surrounding the church's bell from the tower. It's been said that the devil threw it into the nearby River Allen. Some villagers tried to rescue the bell, but they were not able to overcome the strength of the devil as he held onto the bell tightly and it sank to the bottom of the riverbed, never to surface again. Or another story tells of a team of thieves who stole the bell to sell abroad. They crossed over a bridge over the River Stour at White Mill, when suddenly 
realising they were being pursued, dropped the bell into the river and fled. Either way or none, it's exciting to hear the tales and wonder just what really happened. It really is a mysterious and enchanting place where you can easily see how it has gained a reputation for being haunted. The church is a known hotspot to paranormal groups and investigators, so if you're into the more dark and scary, and the unknown, Knowlton could be great for you to explore at night. And just beyond the henge, in a little glade stands an ancient tree, and on its branches hang countless tributes, sorrowing reminders of those no longer with us. And it was great to take a moment to read and see just what has been left in its memory. And it's a beautiful monument and something very inspiring. I read up on the fact that yew trees generally are important to both paganism and Christianity, and it's quite common to find them close to a church. It's a beautiful yet hidden nod to both the pagan and Christian religions, both bold and colourful, respectively. The site itself is quite distinctive, it has a certain enchantment to it. But there is something odd, as simple as the place seems, it's hard to not forget Knowlton Church and Earthworks once you've seen it first hand. And truly, we don't think one visit will be enough. You'll soon be drawn back and intrigued as the first time you arrived. The site is free to explore and roam, as is the parking that's just outside the site. So we really hope you've enjoyed watching our video today and it's given you some inspiration to get out there and explore for yourself. We hope that you can join us soon on our next adventure next Friday. We would like to say a big thank you to our Patreons and a thank you so much for all of you taking the time to watch our content. If you like what you see, please support us by giving us a thumbs up, clicking the notification bell or subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Till next time.